What's going on? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Successes Within Reach podcast, season two, episode two, Navigating Through Toxic Work Environments. I'm your host, Shannon Smith, and I have a very special guest this evening. You have all seen him in season one. He's a motivational speaker, a corporate trainer, an employee engagement specialist, and he's one third of the Dynamic Acting Lead Consultant team. I want to bring to the stage at this time, Mr. Corey Sigu. What's going on, sir? How you doing out there? What's up? What's up, man? I'm all good. Uh, I think you said it best earlier. You was like, I'm alive today, so I can't complain. <laughs> yes, sir. Every day we wake up is a blessing. Absolutely. Yes, sir. All right. Before we get started, I want to remind everybody you can join in the conversation and submit your questions live, and we'll get them on the air at www.facebook dot com slash siwr podcast one more time at www.facebook.com slash siwr podcast also want to remind you you can find us um, and subscribe on anchor spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, stitcher radio public and more and this uh podcast will be streaming live on saturday all right let's get into it First up, I want to uh, have you just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you chose the field of corporate training and also explain to us uh, what falls under the umbrella of employee engagement. Yeah. So. So, again, my name is Corey Sigu. Um, and I mean, I've had probably man, I've been leading since a baby. Um, <laughs> and the, the reason I say that is, is because a lot of people don't understand that leadership comes from um leadership and employee engagement but i'm gonna give y'all a little bit definition and what the what the proper term for it is leadership and employee engagement really comes from everywhere in the home when you at school uh when you man if you was in kindergarten at one time you was a line leader um mm -hmm. leadership is everywhere right uh peer-to-peer -peer leadership manage up manage out manage down like however however that management happens in the and the leadership behind it but I really got into this because I felt myself in a space where I was seeing it was it's almost like you want to be be the person or be the change that you want to see. And so mm -hmm. then I, I just took that route because I said, you know what? There's a lack of leadership out here. There's a lack of leadership training. People want the training. People want mm -hmm. to be developed. People want to learn how to engage their teams more and build that family environment and whatnot versus just saying that you you want to do it. And so I really just stepped out and said, you know what? I think that I got a good way of teaching people. I think that I have a dynamic way of capturing people based on what I've had before. And we're going to get into that a little bit in here, but this, that's why I do what I do because there, there are situations where I know you and even some of the people listening to this right now, you're probably a part of a team. You probably got a manager or a leader or whoever, or you run a team and you're mm -hmm. just hitting yourself over the head. Like, well, I'm trying to get these results, but my people don't want to work. And they checked out and they talking about they just here for a check and all that other stuff. And you're telling yourself right now, I, I'm not even sure how to how to reel them back in. And that's what majority of companies. So I saw the opportunity. Uh, I said, man, hey, I think I'm good at what I do. And really, I, I, Shannon, I allowed the world to tell me that this is what I should be doing, because too okay. many people told me that they were like, there's not too many people built like you. I think I think you're destined for more than what you're doing right now. And I said, you know what? Let me go find out. Nice. Nice. That's what's up, man. It's, it's nothing like uh, walking in your purpose and doing something that you feel like you've been naturally called to do. You know, um, so there are several types of work environments, uh, some good, some even considered great. Uh, some are in a rebuilding phase, but then there are those that are considered toxic. So let's jump into it. What are some sure signs that a company has a toxic work environment? Oh, man. So I got a, I got a few for y'all for this one. So <laughs> so number one, the turnover rate. That's like the telltale mm -hmm. sign, right? The turnover rate. Um, when you look at the work environment and for some reason, folks is just leaving left and right all the time. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong within that organization because and we talked about it before. Um, there's sometimes where, you know, folks go go to another job and just say, well, like, they're just paying me more and that's fine. Mm -hmm. You can't control that as a company. You can't control it unless you just want to match every single person. Uh, mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, depending on the industry, people will poach you. So they'll say, hey, Shan, I'm coming to your company. I know you train your workers well. I'm going to pay my extra twenty thousand dollars. Man, you're going to run mm -hmm. yourself broke by trying to match that twenty thousand every time. 
Um, but the thing is, is the majority of the time, those toxic environments and whatnot come from the the actual leadership side of stuff. So think about this. So number mm -hmm. one, before I get off topic, high turnover. So if these people are leaving all the time, you got some red flag should go off and be like, my God, I'm not sure what's going on here. Mm -hmm. uh, the second part, the negative clicks. If you find yourself within work, like in the workplace and you you got the click going and I'm going to talk about two different types of clicks, too. You got one click where you you get together with them by click. I mean, group friendship, whatever. Mm -hmm. And all y'all do on lunch, y'all talk about how bad this place is uh, on on break. Y'all talk about how bad this place is. You take it mm -hmm. back to Facebook, talk about how bad your job is. Um, like it's just all negativity all the time. Uh, and then then there's the other side where I call it the golden boy click. And uh, I'm sure we've all worked in these jobs where these individuals, you know, it's, the, it's the golden children over here and they can do no wrong. And they clicked up and you can't penetrate the click because if you ask them for some info, it's kind of almost like mean girls. Like you can't sit at this table. Uh, we yeah. wear pink on Friday. You don't fit in with us like you don't have this look like. Yeah. And so so that's the things you got to identify too. like when when you look at the different groups in the workplace, what do mm. they look like? Are they groups of positivity? Are they groups of constant negativity? Is it the golden boy group where you say, well, I don't even have a fighting chance because they <laughs> they the ones that's about to get promoted anyway. So because they you know, they're the golden children. Um, mm. This this next one. So the third one, that's this is a big piece for me that results are celebrated more than behaviors. And so okay. when I say that, um, you have companies who just say, well, what's the result? I don't care what the, res you know, I don't care what people are doing to get the result. I haven't checked to get what that result is to see how they get that result, but they getting it though. Mm -hmm. And so what that does is it beats you down as an employee, as a team member, because to be honest with you, there's ways to get numbers depending on what you're doing. If you're selling stuff, if you're documenting stuff, if you're logging numbers or something, like whatever your job is, there's ways to get it. And you mm -hmm. can find some shady ways on how to get that, but we're celebrating the result versus the behavior. And so what that breeds is an opportunity where, or an environment where you get passed over for raises, you get passed over for promotions, you're not appreciated at your job, although mm -hmm. you're doing the correct thing. And they're sitting back saying, well, bump that. Like, I know you have a pretty good number, but my man, my, my you know, my woman over here, she got, she's phenomenal at her job because simply because her numbers are high, but you know, she's not doing something correctly. You know, he's not doing yeah. something correctly. Um, and then the, the, the final piece to that is communication issues. So as an organization, is there communication issues? I've been in organizations where they treat stuff like the CIA and they don't, they don't, <laughs> They yeah. don't have to. And so from the top level, it's like this. <laughs> it's like, well, we can't tell you. We got all the data. Like, we got all the info. We can't tell you anything like that. And I'll tell you a story real quick. Um, I'm going to leave the company name out of it. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah before we got to get the insurance bucket, I was about to drop an answer. However, <laughs> um, coronavirus is starting, right? This mm -hmm. particular company uh needs to start transitioning to work from home and so i go in there and i and they're saying okay well we got it like i was already working with them because they have an issue kind of with the turnover rate and the leadership development mm -hmm. and stuff like that and uh i flat out said i was like y'all don't like talking to people i was like mm -hmm. that, and that shows that you don't trust your employees because as something as simple as hey guys we might have laptops by the end of the week that way you can start to work from home you don't want to communicate that with to anybody but here's mm -hmm. what they did, Shannon. That Friday, uh, or I believe it was a Thursday they came in, and I, I stay in touch with some of the employees themselves because I like to keep like a, a tab on what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. So those employees said, man, th come Thursday, they said, uh, here's your laptop going, going back home and whatnot. And they were like, wait a minute. I didn't, my kids at daycare, I didn't pay for the day already for the daycare. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't give me like a, you couldn't give me a heads up so it was just disarray um even like working from home like that same company instead of just saying like hey look the date that you're gonna come back is this far mm -hmm. the date that you're coming from is this far and just be mindful that this is when we should come back right we're all adults but then they say just be ready next month be ready the next month 
no, not this month. Be ready the next month. And so you're That's always great. on eggshells and you're like, ah, I don't know how to move. Like, I don't know how to, you know, coordinate my life for the next month or whatever. And you're kind of mm -hmm. living this like month to month payment plan on on. Do I need daycare? Do I need, uh, you know, yeah. do I need, you know, transportation depending on some people? They may be sharing a car. Like, what is it? And so it's like the communication issues inside where there's no trust. There's no transparency. There's no uh, you're 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 in the know of what's going mm -hmm. on here. Even from the highest level, I get that there's certain stuff you don't want to disseminate down. But yeah. there are certain things that will keep people at ease and keep people thinking, OK, yes, we are family because we are communicating. So if there are communication issues, that's also super big red flag for me of a, of a toxic work environment. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. It says a lot when, you know, from the top down, there's, you know, several breaks of communication and the, uh, so to say, line staff always feels like, you know, like you said, they have that CIA type of, you know, behavior with it. Like, okay, I asked you a question. Why do I just get one word answers all the time? Or why is it just, oh, I, we can't discuss that. You know, that's, that's not building any type of trust between management and, the, you know, your line staff. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of, in most work environments, um, they're pretty much three levels. You got the executives, the managers, and then your staff. Um, so in your experience, what is usually um, at the root cause for a toxic work environment? And then the second part to that is what level is usually to blame for that? Yeah. So to be honest with you, um, my personal belief, it all starts at the supervisor level. Okay. Um, and the reason I say that is because at that level, you're pushed and pulled in certain ways. So and, and I want people to think about this. The supervisor is, quote unquote, the face of the company for the line level worker. Um, mm -hmm. They create the environment. They create the the will from the from the associate. They create the the in the they foster the growth within it. But mm -hmm. here's the thing. I want to blame somewhat on the manager, like the actual management level. Uh, because mm -hmm. the CEOs are up here and I and I want to discredit like I want to debunk that first. The CEOs are up here and they're just like, this is the vision. This is where we're going. This is what we think that should happen, whatever. And they go on down the line and they start telling people, um, you know, this is the direction that we're going. But mm -hmm. the root of it all is with the super the supervisory group, because you are the face and you're getting a message from here and the managers are saying, as a manager, metrics and numbers and production and 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 data and process. And from here, you got people that are like, how about you care about me? How do how do I grow? How do I become someone? How do I fit within this company? What is my vision? What's my my alignment? And then you have to balance. How do you tell them and how do you suffice for them? And so mm -hmm. that, I believe personally, the root cause is always the, it, it's within the supervisor group because they they may not know how to deliver that info they may not know how to foster that information or foster the environment of growth to find the alignment within the line level person so that mm -hmm. yeah that's that's the biggest thing for me is when we talk about typically there's a breakdown there's probably the biggest breakdown within the supervisory group now here's the thing as a manager you have to understand and we're still in that management group right because i'm gonna lump them two mm -hmm. together as a manager, are you portraying the right thing? Are you sending the right signal? Because not everyone takes everything the same. And we also have to realize we have people in leadership levels. Like we have people, supervisory, team lead, whatever you want to call it, supervisor number two, whatever y'all want to call it. We have people in positions like that who just wanted the pay grade to it. So they're not worried about the the you know fostering the environment or taking care of the people or doing anything like that so as a manager you have to remember okay when i when i blast this out i can tell shannon hey look we're we're trying to hit this goal this month but then shannon knows how to, to disseminate that to his team in a way where the vision aligns and they're on board for it and they're gung-ho for like trying to get this result because they're bought into like who he is the environment getting promoted, getting like better within themselves. But then you got to, you have another individual who may come in and just be like, Hey guys, the goal is to do this. And then I'm going to beat you upside the head every single day for you to hit that goal. So that for me, that's always the root is, is within that supervisory group, but I got to teeter like between the managers and then the soups. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. 
All right. Let's see. <laughs> got, uh, Mike said Cora really breaks down employee <laughs> management like a damn champ. <laughs> Oh, man. Just reminding everybody out there, this is the Successes Within Reach uh, podcast, and I'm live here with Corey Sigu. We're talking about navigating through toxic work environments. And with that, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. I'm ready to get the ball. All right, we're back. We're back. All right. So in the case of the environment being toxic from the top down, staff sometimes take on leader, take on the leadership role and have to take care of each other. Uh, so my next question I want to ask you is, what are some things that staff can do at their level to try to keep communication flowing and morale boosted amongst themselves? Uh, yeah. So so this this particular question is literally the reason why I do what I do. And, mm -hmm. and the reason I say that is because through throughout life for me, I've always developed leaders through the team. And then they and then those people go on to other teams and then they infect those teams. And then mm -hmm. they they, you know, create the environment on those teams. And then it makes it easier for that environment. Mm -hmm. And now we it's kind of like y'all, y'all ever seen that game? What's it uh what's it called with the little with the little army soldiers? I think it's a risk. And so you mm -hmm. take risk and then you pile your soldiers here and then you move them and you take over this one and then you move it and take over this one. Like that's basically what this is. So mm -hmm. the number one thing I'll say, you have a toxic work environment. Um, what you want to do is to, and this is going to sound cliche, create the environment that you want to be in. And so here's what I mean by that. So you have individuals that will say, I'm waiting on my supervisor. I'm waiting on my manager to, to foster mm -hmm. that environment. But lo and behold, you can also create that environment for what you want to be. And here's the thing, Shannon. Here's the unorthodox way of how I go about doing stuff. So you've created that environment. Y'all are happy. Y'all are thriving. Y'all are getting numbers. You're having fun. Mm -hmm. And y'all are winning, right? It, would, it, would, it wouldn't make sense. It would be crazy for your supervisor to be like, y'all stop having all that fun over there. Y'all stop being so productive. Y'all stop, you know, y'all stop doing it <laughs> yeah. like it's going to it's going to look crazy to them. I believe personally that teams succeed because of one of two reasons. You either have a really good leader or you have a really good team that bands together and says that I don't care about this person. Bump them. We're going to mm -hmm. band together ourselves and then we're going to we're going to take over and we're going to get to the goal that we want to get to. Um, so I always take the approach from from inside out. So you can take the leader, you can teach him, blah, blah, blah. You can do all that stuff. But you, if you take the team and they band together and then they say, I don't care who my supervisor is. And then you dig deeper and you dig into the individual and then you say, I don't care if I'm here for a month, six months. I get another shift. I go to another team. I don't mm -hmm. care who it is. When I go to that team, I'm pushing the same message because this is the environment that I want to be in. And so once they start pushing that, everybody else is like, oh, man, I was too afraid to speak up. But, yeah, that's what I wanted. Yeah. So then they start to infect all the other teams around them. And so that, then all of a sudden you see the teams start to uplift themselves. And then, all, but here's the thing, as a manager, you have to realize where it's coming from because all of a sudden you see this rise in morale and productivity and all this other stuff. And then you're like, oh man, it, you know, man, that supervisor's doing a hell of a job over there. And the team's like, nah, bro, it ain't, <laughs> it ain't them. I tell you that yeah. much. So they have yeah. to keep a pulse on this stuff. So yeah, so creating your own environment. So here's here's the thing. Every team, I firmly believe, has an informal leader. They have that informal leader, and they just don't hold the title. Mm -hmm. I think that every team, and it may be multiple, so they should be able to take charge at that point. And this is the test of a true leader. If you can even allow that person to take charge at times to say, you know what? I'm going to help develop you. I see the talent in you. Even if you – Shannon, it, it kills me when I hear people say, this is my title. Hear me roar. You can't take over my section. Yeah. So you sound insecure about your job. Yeah. Exactly. There is nothing wrong. And we can talk about we can talk about the co like building a coaching tree too. There is nothing wrong with developing that person 
to do a specific role within that within that team and then that changes the entire dynamic but it also changes that person because now that person says i'm important i'm valuable he's allowing me he trusts me and then all of a sudden you start to see the growth from that person so yeah. that's what that's where you want to start and and literally if i can preach that to everyone is just create the environment where you are if you're at the supervisor level you might have bad managers create that environment can your can your fellow peers come together and say you know what this is where we want to go with the department your manager is going to sound crazy if they're like you know what i got a damn good group of supervisors man they just producing and having fun and retaining workers man man y'all stop all that over there man i ain't say do that it's going to exactly. sound crazy but that's indirectly what happens too is all of a sudden you create that environment and then you almost make them look crazy if they decide to tell you something otherwise yep. so create that environment that you want to be in but also here's the other piece once you know what you want you need to push your your superior your supervisor manager director whoever you need to push them in the direction to say i need you to give me what i need because yeah, you gotta manage up sometimes right and that's the hardest part a lot of people want to pack like they want to take that passive approach and they're like oh it's a soup it's a manager it's a director I, I don't have that title, so I'm I'm gonna leave that alone. No, manage up and tell them this yeah. is what I need. If they're not giving you numbers, hey, I ask for my numbers, and I always tell people sometimes, hey, look, if you still not getting what you need, there's a paper trail for a reason. There's a reason they call it that. Just Facts. like how, just as a member of management can put a paper trail on you for things that you haven't done, put a paper trail on them. But here's the thing. I'm not saying that so you can go tit for tat with your, with your, your manager, your supervisor, your director. I'm not saying that because uh, Shannon, they're going to leave here and they're going to be like, hey, Corey, so we get a paper trail. I'm about to be in HR tomorrow. I'm exactly. not saying that. The majority of people, you send an email, you send two emails, and then you start saying, hey, um, you didn't respond to uh, my second email, my third email. Um, what's going on? Mm -hmm. and then so what happens is maybe let's say you're struggling in your in your metrics you're struggling at your production at work uh and then your manager comes and speaks to you and says uh and i'm trying to help somebody keep their job here your manager comes to you and says well look here you haven't been performing we you know we might have to separate from the company all this and that and then you pull them hot emails up and be like well i've been trying to figure out what i've been rated I don't know what I am. I haven't been getting the help that I need. I've been asking to get coached for three weeks now, and I haven't gotten mm -hmm. anything like that. What you think is going to happen once that once that person sees that? Ah, I've identified where the issue is, and it's yeah. not that person. Now, Shannon, it took me a while to get to that point, and what really made me realize is that, you know what? For the majority of the time, no one sucks at their job. No one is just terrible at their job. Mm -hmm. What becomes terrible is when you don't have the environment to push you into that direction or push you into that level. So here's what happened to me one time. I was at work uh, and they said, Corey, we're going to put you on a special project. And of course, I was like, cool, I'm gung ho for it. I'm like, let's go. He was mm -hmm. like, so this is coming from the director and the AVP. And they said, uh, they said, we got this program called a success team. And I said, well, what is that? And they were like, we're going to give you the bottom 10 of justice over the course of two months uh they're either going to graduate off your team or we're going to terminate them oh man i'm not about to termination life <laughs> i have had an, in, in my span of managing people i have had one person quit on me and that's the mm -hmm. only reason was was because their husband moved to kansas and they were like well obviously i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be yeah. away from my husband that long um because he was moving there permanently i was like, i don't have a problem with that right mm -hmm. uh do your thing you know best best wishes to you but here's the thing so they say we're gonna give you the, the bottom 10 people you got to get them rated to this certain rating over the course of two months if they don't hit that collectively over the course of two months we're gonna terminate them so i'm like yeah it's not about to happen under my watch fast forward <laughs> what i realized though through that process was not a single soul on those teams actually did not they they didn't struggle with the job they didn't under they didn't understand certain nuances and i used to break it down all the time this job is not hard this job is repetition the majority of jobs that we have are repetition outside yeah. of maybe being a surgeon or something like that 
the majority of the jobs that you do, it's the same thing over and over. And that's why we get burnt out every day because we keep doing the same thing over and over. Yeah. But if you become intentional in doing that or you tweak this little thing here or you change that little thing here, all of a sudden your, your metrics shoot up. I'll give you an example. I had a, uh, I had a, a lady on my team. She's an older lady. It sounded great. And uh, in that in that particular time, we got rated on uh, on surveys for mm. our uh, department. She came into me. It was about June. She had like 20 surveys at like 50 percent, um, which and I'll break it down for y'all. So the average person in the department used to get about 10 to 12 a month. She had okay. 20 in about six months. Uh, so what that told me was, was she's not memorable, mm. right? She's not memorable. And when she is memorable, she's not memorable enough for them to be like, well, you know, there's, there's some, some reason I should give her an excellent survey. So sat down with her, started listening to her. I'm like, man, the tone is great, man. She's talking to people. She sounds inviting. She sounds helpful. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and then I sat down. And I said, "Man, she connects like no other." She's on the phone. I told you, older lady. That's why I brought this up. She's talking about old westerns on the phone, and she, yeah, man, I watch <laughs> Walker Texas Ranger all the time. And she was like, "I watch Hundo and all that stuff." And I'm like, "What is she talking about?" <laughs> so, <laughs> the issue that I found was she wasn't telling people what she want, what what they should be giving her. Mm. And so, in the phone call. I was like, "Why don't you tell people?" Cause we couldn't, we, you can't tell them that there's a survey coming. I was like, why don't you tell them that you want an excellent survey? Mm. The other piece was, was she would say, you know what, look, uh, Shannon. So we got two options. You can do this or you can do that. And every single time on the phone, they'd be like, well, I don't know what I want to do. What do you think I should do? And then she'd be like, well, I don't know what you should do. I can't tell you what to do. I said, why don't you tell them what to do? People love being told what to do, guide them. I don't call my company. I don't pay you money as a yeah. service for you to be like so what do you want to do out of you call your cell phone company and be like hey yeah i think uh i think i use too much internet and so i might need to increase my plan what do you think and they say i don't know what do you want to do tell me it looks yeah, like you're supposed to be the expert six months in a row i think yeah. you should increase it these are the plans we should do right like we just sitting on the phone like i don't know you tell me what to do i don't, I don't sure whatever mm -hmm. um and so when she started, the only thing she changed about everything she was doing was she started telling people, um, I wanted to provide you excellent customer service. And she started telling people, based on what you told me, I think you should do this. Whether they would say yes or no, the surveys flew in. The very next month, now check this out, Shannon. She was rated because it was on a scale of one to five. She was rated like a like a 1.9, which was mm -hmm. this particular individual was dead last on the floor. So she was my weakest person. She went the very next month, again, up until June, rated a 1.9, 20 surveys in. She generated 18 surveys that month at like 80 something percent, which was like for that particular rating, it was like a four point something on the scale. And then she, that brought her year to date metric all the way up. She was looking like a whole nother person for that particular month. She was rated like a 4.3 or something like that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything that she was doing in her day to day. It was just a couple of tweaks that changed her entire life. Yeah, it was that the the talks we used to have in the morning. She was like she and she told me herself, I feel like when I come to this team, I found purpose. I feel like when I you know, when I talk to my teammates, they're so, you know, they're surrounding me with love. I feel like when I'm on the phone, you're not micromanaging me. Although, yes, my numbers may not say that I'm good at this job, but you allow me to be a person. It's as yeah. simple as that. Making people feel value. I mean, it, it changes the whole game changes the whole game it's simple but what we do is we say there's a process there's the data behind it you're not doing well at your job i'm gonna stand over your shoulder every now and again uh not even even every every now and again i'm gonna stand on your shoulder all day and i'm gonna make sure you're doing your job and i'm gonna be like don't yeah don't do that yeah you gotta do this too yeah, just make sure you're doing that hey what you doing over there i don't see i don't see that you're ready to, to do the next thing or whatever hey your productivity mm -hmm. doesn't look and then all of a sudden you feel boxed in and you're like god good god this person's always looking at me uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's just and that's just one example of of someone. Long story short, I'm not going to tell you all about the rest of the people, but we actually broke the program because then the director and the AVP come back, I think, after three rounds of this. And they say <laughs> yeah, it's not them uh, because we haven't fired anybody that came from you. And the matter of fact, we looked month over month after that and their numbers continued to climb. So they were like, mm -hmm. well, clearly you were doing something right. So it's not them. Yeah. 
So then it forced them to look back and say, okay, well, what does my leadership group look like? What are they doing? Mm. So yeah, it's, it's, it's simple really. And, and but I, I, I understand that certain people have different aspects to how they want to lead, but you'll never go wrong by valuing people and putting people in a position to win. Gotcha. So we just covered from the bottom uh, side of that spectrum. So the next one is what would you suggest for managers and executives when they identify that the toxic environment is rooted at the staff level, um, but it doesn't necessarily warrant termination just yet. So what are some things that you would rec uh, recommend for executives to do? Yeah. So honestly, you got to get in the trenches. Um, too many executives, uh, too many people on the upper management level. They just want to say do this, but they don't want to get in there. So get mm. in the trenches. Look, I get it. You got some reports to run. You got the data to, to look at. You got the focuses to shift and like that. But you got to get in the trenches, right? And you're never gonna know truly what's going on in there because a lot of times you'll say like, "Well, we just we just need to get rid of this person because they're just toxic to the workplace. So they're they're just not mm. doing what I need them to do." But it's not really that. Maybe they're unengaged. A lot of times I've gone into businesses and I've realized, well, no reason, no, no wonder that your employees are struggling because your supervisors are struggling because y'all never pour into them. Mm -hmm. And y'all just keep telling them, do this, do that, do this, do this. And y'all never pour back into them. Y'all never train them beyond what they've been trained before. Y'all don't do any focus groups. Y'all don't ask them for their opinion. So mm -hmm. they go back and they just say, yeah, that's what they want us to do. Go ahead and do that. So it's. And for those methodical people out here, for executives and whatnot, I want you to create a focus group. Um, a lot of times they call them skip levels. Get to the nitty gritty and start meeting with these with these line level people about their supervisor. Get with the supervisor about their manager. Like hold more skip levels. People wait wait for these uh, what they call it, AOS surveys. So it's like the the appreciation surveys or the voice of the associate mm -hmm. surveys, three sixty surveys. They wait for those to come out and then be like, my God, what, what is going with the data? The data tells me that we're not engaged and all this and stuff. Yeah. But you haven't gotten yourself in the trenches maybe once a month. It didn't have to be a long time. Once, twice a, a month, three times a month, something like that. That way you can get a pulse on what's actually going on. We, we I don't know if you watched the show, Shannon, but the, um, I used to watch it a lot just to get a little bit from it. But um, what is it? Undercover Boss. Yeah. How many yeah. times does that CEO go down to that line level and they're like, oh, man, I never realized it was this hard. I never realized yeah. people were going through these things and that this person had to walk to work every single day, um, you know, or this person, you know, got whatever going on in their lives or they homeless still coming to work, showing up for the business that I'm trying to run. You'll yeah. never know that unless you have the you have the pulse on the people and that you're visible. And I've seen I've seen executives do that and they 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 don't just do that presidential campaign where they come around and they be like yeah just do great you can be successful too and they move on to the next building no they're actually in there hey look you know i'm pat you on the back today hey look man that was a great call and then you turn around and you're like oh shoot i didn't even realize that was the ceo right there i didn't even realize that was the you know the chief information officer or something like that or the senior vice president like i didn't even realize it was that person uh, but it goes to show you at that point, hey, I, I'm trying to see what you're going through and I'm trying to help you. So that that's the biggest thing. So create the focus groups. I want you to really get in the trenches with your people to see exactly what they're going through. And to be honest with you, I want you to I want executives to start to think about it like this, because at that point, it's a very process driven area. Start to think about what process helps the person. And this is going to sound simple as I don't know what. What process helps the person and is it vital to the job? What process is fluff because I want them to just do it because it sounds like a good thing to do. Yeah. Uh, once you start getting rid of all this fluff over here, you start realizing that it wasn't value added anyway. And then you start focusing on this and you have happier management groups. You have happier line employment like employees and everything just starts to come up from there. So, yeah, that's 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 my take on that. Yeah. And it's it's funny you mentioned that uh, you called it a presidential walk. I call it a parade walk. Yeah. And, uh, I wish more executives actually stop doing that because people understand when you're doing it just because mm -hmm. and they understand when you're really coming down in the trenches to see about them. You know, if, if you just come down once a quarter or, or once every six months and just you know you're in and out in five ten minutes people trying to hey i got a question for you hey oh oh oh, let me put you on my calendar go talk to my, my assistant like 
people know that you're not genuine when you actually come down at you know to come holler at them you're just walking through to make an appearance and if all you're mm-hmm. doing is making appearances you can keep that yeah and that's um i tell you what I've, I've worked at a job before where it was it was kind of like that uh we get a new vice president um mm. the vice president we had previous to that was actually uh one of my mentors at the time um you know she goes on and moves off to a different a different location and the new person we get in is you know talking all that talk and she's like oh man i'm a, i'm out there with y'all i just love to be around the associates and you know just vibe with y'all and all this stuff and she's talking a good game and i'm I was mm-hmm. like, yes, I got another one because you never you never really see that from that level. But the one before her was like, like walking the walk. And she was like, look, if you want to come into my office, she was sending out she was sending out motivation every day. And if you sent her an email back, she would reply to you and be like, man, I love what you said. Hey, I, I like what you said about this. And she would be like, how about we discuss it one day? And she'll set a meeting with him. You know that I approached mm-hmm. her randomly one day and I said, I said, you know what? Uh, I was like, I think I, I firmly believe that the only reason I can't succeed at certain roles is because I just don't know what you know. Uh, mm-hmm. I was like, so can we sit down and you start kind of spilling that into me? Because I know you can't download your brain into mine. And she was like, cool. I tell you what, 30 minutes before work starts, every, uh, you know, every month, let's sit down. Let's talk about some things that, you know, I've learned through my through my ages. I've learned through my positions that I can spill on down to you. That way you don't have to go figure it out. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, yo, like, you know, just even Check certain five. things where she she created a, a, a SharePoint site, at, at, you know, on the job. And, you know, for if people wanted to put anything on there, recommendations, things that may be positively that they saw, things that negatively they saw to put it mm-hmm. on there. And you would think for the most part, if a, if the if the person can voice their concern to the vice president, it's probably going to be, I need you to fix this. I need you to do this. I, I'm not getting this. I need more money. Can you see about this? Mm. It was all positive stuff, but it's nice. because she had a, she had her pulse. Like she had her, her thumb on it. And she was like, I understand where my people are coming from and I'm within, mm. I'm one with them. So when they give me feedback, it's nothing that I didn't know already. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to, uh, Slightly transition. So some people have toxic managers and may have a company where there is no HR department or grievance board. You know, some small businesses aren't big enough, you know, to actually Mm -hmm. have a full HR department. So in that case, what are some strategies uh, for an employee to address a toxic supervisor and get them to listen to staff grievances and try to find common ground without them getting defensive and just putting a wall up and shutting them out? Yeah. And so so the the first piece um... I want to talk about there is and i and i slightly talked about it before was to and i talked about creating a paper trail and all that stuff but it, it's mm-hmm. when you create the environment that you want and then honestly again we're all adults have a sit down with that person and whether it's team-based whether it's one-on-one you want to have that conversation with them to be like look this is what i'm not getting from you i would like to get to this level Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's a real adult conversation, not to belittle them as a as your manager, as your supervisor, as whoever, the executive, whatever. Have it have that real life conversation with them to be like, I'm not getting this. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, you you keep pressing me about these numbers. You keep pressing me about this. But every I've noticed and use like language like this. I've noticed I've observed. um, I felt like these types of things. Don't use I felt so much because a feeling can just be you and they could just be like you blowing smoke right now. But when you say I've observed when you do this, this happens. I've I've seen uh, I've noticed when this happens. Now you're talking actions that are taken like you're talking real observable steps and tasks and whatnot, because when you start out, well, I feel like you don't care about me. Ah, Well, how do you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, So when you talk as a as adult to adult, we both put our pants on right now. You, mm-hmm. you have to understand. And sometimes you can push your, your supervisor to understand, look, you have a role. I have a role, your role. And realistically, we, we hype like the manager, supervisor, even director and all that stuff. up. It's just a, t- it's a specific role, but we put the title on it and it's now prestigious for everybody to talk to. Uh, when you go to Thanksgiving and they're like, yeah, I'm the, uh, <laughs> The chief, whatever, uh, you know, at then and everybody's like, oh, man, you know, Corey's really doing well for himself. Uh, 
really behind the scenes everybody hates your guts because you don't connect with anybody but um so you, so when you have that like one-on-one -on -one conversation a lot of times that fixes the issue off top mm -hmm. and the reason i say that is because every single person that i've run across maybe a couple give or take here when they've had that conversation they've come away and they've been like you know what they actually started doing what i needed mm -hmm. them to do um i've had an i've had one person i've worked with before he, she said i had the conversation with my supervisor uh, I'm not getting coached. I'm not getting developed. I, and you know how I am. You know, I like to have my one on ones and figure out where I'm at. And she, he said, uh, well, she said like two weeks later, she was like, my man stepped down mm. because he was like, I went and looked inside. And after that conversation, I was like, you know what? I haven't been giving it and I'm not giving y'all the best opportunity and I'm not cultivating y'all. I'm kind of responsible for helping y'all grow. And I'm not mm. doing that. And he took a demotion and was like, I, he apologized to him and was like, you know what? I'm glad you brought that to me. I can actually respect that. It, it takes a big person to do yeah. that. It, it takes, takes a really big person to do that. You got to squash all ego to be able yeah. to do that. Because, <laughs> and now you got yeah. to tell your friends, well, yeah, I'm not really the supervisor no more because, uh, you, know, I just, you know, my associate told me that they weren't giving it to me. And I realized that. So, you know, I demoted myself like that's. That's a tough pill to swallow, but that's the number one thing. I always have that conversation. The other piece going back to building that environment that you want. If that supervisor is just so knuckleheaded and they don't want to help you out and they don't want to give you what you need. Look, man, mm -hmm. go find it. I firmly believe that you are responsible for your career in whatever business that you're in. There is somebody and I preach this all the time. There is somebody in your department succeeding at whatever you're failing at currently. Go find them. Mm -hmm. Go ask them. And so when you come from the, the, the employee level, the line level, the associate level, when you come from that level and you and you start to say, woe is me. I don't have help. I don't you know, I'm not getting developed. I'm not getting coached. Look, like this is your life <laughs> at the end of the day. Yeah. You take control of your life and you go find that person. I've done it myself. I've had to go find other people on other teams that I was like, look, man, you really good at this. Uh, can you teach me how it's done? Look, I see that you and you getting shot outs every single month about this. Can you teach me how what you doing? And then mm -hmm. that's when you take control of yourself, because a lot of people think we go into work and now we're in this corporate environment. It, it's no different than life. You probably got a couple jobs out there that they're like, you better fit into your office and stay in your cubicle and leave that alone. That's a different topic for a different day, unless we're about to bring this up in a question in a little <laughs> bit. But uh, no, we do got a question from the crowd, though. <laughs> you might want to quit, but I'm going to wrap this up and then we can take that question, though. So the thing is, when you start to do things like that, so you had your, you, you had your heart to heart with this person, but then you need to carry mm. yourself and be like, you know what? Someone out here is winning. Let me go find yeah. them. And it's almost kind of like entrepreneurship, right? Like you reach out to somebody, you'd be like, look, I, you done built a seven-figure business. I need to know. Mm -hmm. It might cost me to know, but I need to know. Most of the time yeah. in corporate America, it doesn't cost you. They A lot of people would just be like, well, here, sure, whatever. Here's the information because they don't know how mm -hmm. to charge for that. But it's it's this is your life. You take control of that. Like you, you fix what's inside and you go figure out where you need to fix it from. Um, so yeah, it's those, those two things pivotal every single time fix whatever needs to happen with that toxic leader, that toxic manager. Uh, if it, to be honest with you, if it goes beyond there, um, I'm not a big proponent of doing this, but trust your gut. And, and if you got to get out, you got to go. Uh, and that takes a big leader too, because I've, I've had to tell people that before, look, if this place does not sit right with your soul and you feel like you're getting what you need, but you're still unhappy. Look, man, I'm all for you going to find happiness. But here's the thing. In the midst of that, I'm going to show you why you should stay. Mm -hmm. No doubt. So you kind of touched on this and in, in some of the stuff you're just talking about. But uh, we got a question mm -hmm. that was submitted from uh, Mike says, do you believe that the success of the employee is entirely on the employer? Um, and I know everybody looks at this a little bit different. Some say yes, some say no. So what's your take on it? Yeah. So. It's a yes and no. Uh, <laughs> if that answers it right, so it's a yes and no. So here's why I say yes. It's a yes from the employer, and it doesn't, and, and it's not entirely on the employer because mm. the employer can only give you so much. And the thing is, you know, you applied for a certain job depending on where you were. Uh, that has a certain reach, a certain tool, 
uh, a certain like wherewithal to where they can provide you. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you and, and I'll give you an example, if you apply for a job and you say, well, I'm not being developed uh, to kind of take my skill set to the next level, but you apply for a job that's a startup and they don't have money and they can't give you these certificates and they don't have the money to be able to send you off to these classes or bring in trainers or something like that. That's not on the employer. You kind of apply for that job. Um, mm -hmm. Now, can they maybe find the money? Sure. But at the same time, you kind of apply and you work at a position where they don't have the funds to be able to actually develop you like that. Now, here's why I say no. So it doesn't always fall on the employer because and then we just touched on this. Right. So you are responsible for your life. You are responsible for the growth that happens to you. So go mm -hmm. find it. Uh, a lot of times over the course of my life, of, of my career, I have had to tell people, well, why why didn't you find a mentor within your company? Why haven't mm -hmm. you found someone that you can lean on? The same, to be honest with you, Shannon, the same principles when it comes to business and entrepreneurship, it's the same thing that you can do inside, right? So we talk about building communities and we talk about coaching and we talk about one-on-ones and then we talk about getting certified and all these different things. If you're in the typical company that can afford this type of stuff to you, then build that within your company. So what's your community? Your peers that might be doing great at their job that I can now put myself in and have that conversation daily about how my job, you know, how I do this at the job that makes me successful about how I excel at these metrics that makes me successful. I went find a mentor that can teach me how to do the job better, teach me how to navigate this company better, i.e. entrepreneurship, navigate my niche better, right? My market better. I found my I found my mentor. I found my coach. They helped me every single month through that, right? And then from there, it's like it's like the, just the implementation of it. And I think we've talked about this as far you know on the cipher on uh, you know just as far as business goes. You get the information. You get around the right people. You get the like you get the will inside yourself. Now go do it. Yeah. And so it's the same thing when you're in work. So that's why I say yes or no. So yes, because they they have to be able to to give it to you. But then no, because you still have you still put your feet on the ground every single day. You get up and you go to this job. So go get what you want. Yeah. You know, and, and unfortunately, I would have to answer that question. Yes and no. Also, um, you know, and I say, yes, it's it's partially on the employer because at the base of it all, you have to get a return on your investment. You hired this person. So you're only as successful as your staff allows your company to be. So if you see that people are um, lacking training, lacking focus, um, it's, it's become a toxic work environment, whatever the case may be, as the employer, it's your job to do something about that. Whether you need to bring in outside training, um, contact your corporate training team. I don't care if you bring everybody in the conference room and y'all watch YouTube videos during lunch hour. It's your <laughs> job to do something about right it. Up. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of people will, will take the cop out and say, um, you know, oh, we don't have the budget. We don't have the budget. Fam, it's plenty of free training courses online. There's plenty of companies that do free training. And then, like I said, you can even just get on YouTube and pull up four or five a day, you know, or, or four or five a month. You know what I mean? Or just take a whole day and just say, OK, this is going to be staff training day. We shutting down everything. We just going to, you know, get in, get some TED talks, get a couple of, you know, Harvard Business Review talks, whatever the case may be. You have plenty of resources. But then on the flip side of that, I say that it's up to the employee because, just like the employer can go and find those resources, you can as well. Again, sometimes you have to uh, manage up and you have to say, OK, look, this is what we need as a staff. This is what we're not getting. What can you do about it? If they don't you know, put their best foot forward and do anything about it. OK, you take the lead. You reach out to some of these resources. You see what what trainers you can get to come in. Uh, if you work for an organization that does have an HR department, reach out to that HR department and say, look, this is what's going on in my office. We spoke to management about it. They don't know exactly which direction to start out. Is there anything you all can come in and do to help us out here to do some type of training, some type of class, Zoom meeting, whatever the case may be? So sometimes you have to take it in your own hands if your management is dropping the ball. So, you know, that's why I said I would also say yes and no to that to that question. Yeah, no, that's good. You know, 
And with that one, we're going to take one more short break, and then we'll be right back to wrap it up. This next uh, break is brought to you by Breakthrough Kings. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Welcome back. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Successes Within Reach podcast. I'm live here with Corey CU, and we're attacking uh, navigating through toxic work environments. Um, so as we uh, get ready to wrap up, you touched on something a minute ago where you talked about, um, you know, an employee that wants to quit, you know, because of what's going on. But you would try to convince them as to why they need to be there. So. What I want to ask you is for the employee that loves what they do, but hates their work environment, what can they do to maintain positivity and productivity in the midst of chaos until they can move on? Um, Because, you know, nobody just wants to sit there in a chaotic environment and be negative all day. But sometimes people can't just up and quit. You know, it could be the job is close to home. You know, they have a family to think about. Um, it could be the salary or whatever the case may be. So what would be, be your recommendations for them to just maintain their own sanity and productivity in the meantime? Because you don't want to burn a bridge on your way out. Yeah. And so so this one, this one, the biggest thing I can tell you is just make sure that you're running to something, not from something. And so mm-hmm. like a lot of people, they look at the these chaotic environments or like maybe this doesn't fit what I and, and I'm going to start by saying this. There's a lot of people who fabricate how bad that environment actually is. Um, mm. And I get it. There are times where it's like, you know what? I just hate working here. Right. But uh, the thing is, uh, I tell a lot of people, just be careful with the devil that you dance with, because depending on the reason that you're saying that that you don't like working here, it's probably going to be the same thing that you don't like working at this other company. Like there's some mm-hmm. Zappos and some Patagonias and stuff like that that are just like gung ho for people. And they're like, hey, if you want to take if you want to go on a mission trip for three months paid, go ahead and do that. I think we can all agree that the majority of people they not offering that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. Make sure that you're running to something. So what's the purpose of this job? I think that every single job that I've gotten has taught me something, has given me a principle, has given me something like. Shannon, I worked at a I worked at an offshore fabrication company before. Uh, I'm not offshore, but we're sending the goods offshore, and I'm mm. and I'm pulling nuts and bolts and flanges that go on pipes, and I'm cutting pipe and all this other stuff. And I'm like, man, this is for the birds. And I hated working there because mm. I worked around a bunch of older men who all they talked about was was what tail they was gonna go chase, what they was gonna go do. And I was like, man, I hate working here. But Mm -hmm. the thing was, I had to understand why I was here. What's the principles behind, like, what's the reason I'm here, right? I'm chasing something. I'm not running from from it, from something. So while you're in this job, yeah, you may be looking for another job. And I'm I'm all for that. Go go to a place. Go try it out where you're happy. You got one life to live. Uh, Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is a lot of people will say, I don't like this job. I'm going to just quit. And then you see them on Facebook talking about I ate this ice sandwich again because I ain't got no money. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, yo, why did you leave your job? It wasn't that bad. Like, if there was a sexual harassment issue, if there was like uh, some violence going on or something like that, mm-hmm. I think for the most part that we've probably been through some situations that we can ride it out until we find what we want. Um, yeah. And it's not going to take you long. What, six months, three months, depending on whatever you're trying to do. Uh, I mean, if you're an executive, that might take a little bit longer. So, you know, just keep mm-hmm. your ducks in a row. But what's the thing that you get away from this? And I brought that job up, that fabrication job come uh, up because I was like, I don't know what this is teaching me. But mm-hmm. in the midst of it, when I talked about leadership and everything is leadership, I had a group of 50 some year old men, 60 some year old men that had been offshore and they'd done all these rugged jobs and all this stuff. And they manly men and all that stuff. I was able to get them to bond together and I'm on the same level as them. I was able to get them to bond together 
I had drivers that would pull up to pull it, you know, to get their order because we had to ship it out to whatever company or whatever. And they would come mm. in. The drivers used to just sit in the truck and be like, bro, load it up. We good. Mm. What happened was, was through the engagement, through the like empowering of people, through like the value of people. I learned how to look because I always used to think, man, they always going to be this young buck. I was like 19, 20 at the time or something like that. They, man, this young buck can't tell me what to do. You know, I'm not about to leave. I always used to think that. But then what I realized from that job was I was like, people just enjoy leadership if you push them in the right direction. And so what yeah. happened after a while was I would get an order. They would be like, you know what? We're going to let Corey pull it because he's the he's the fastest person we got in here. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to quality control him on the backside and just be like, hey, you don't like pull what you need, get it right. But then we're going to make mm -hmm. sure that everything's laid out and all that stuff. And then what happened from there is they just started saying, you know what? We got orders, man. I, let me come pull that with you. Let me ride on that forklift with you. That way we can chop it up and we can talk. Right. Because everything that I was spitting. It was like the positivity and like the, hey, I'm, you know, be somebody and all that stuff. And they was like, man, I want to yeah. take a ride. Like we'd have drivers come in there and they'd be like, man, I'm about to go. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to go inside the office. Like I'm, I'm out the truck now because I want to go talk to Corey real quick. Mm -hmm. But what I also realized is it's when like and I, and I use this example, we used to pull pipe. And so in uh, the pipe, it used to have his heat code and we used to have to turn it in. And the, uh, when they turned it in, they said, yeah, because the heat code, for those of you who don't know, it told them the certain amount of tensile strength, the 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 pressure that can go on it that way. If y'all have ever watched uh, uh, what's that? What's that movie? They was offshore. Um, I can't think of it right now, but the thing exploded. Uh, but it's because the pipe bust and the people didn't have it on there correctly and all that junk. But even, mm -hmm. even that, what's the principle? I was like, you got to make sure that you put you pull in the right tools, that you pull in the right material. Or you can blow up other people's lives, and yeah. so then I'm taking a, I'm taking a, the the principles behind. It. I'm like, yo, that's why I'm here. So although I hate this job, I'm not trying to wake up at six a.m. every day and come pull pipe out of yard and drive a forklift and sit in the sun all day with a hard hat and all that. I'm not trying to do that. Mm. But I learned some lessons there. In your job, what lesson are you learning? Like, there's an individual that I was working with, and she was a caterer. And her, her customer service was trash. Like, and it's not that she sounded bad. It's just she sounded like a robot. And I'm like, when people call uh, people, they want to talk to somebody. So, yeah. like, when, when I, I, I would go online if I wanted to hear the prompted message, the, the scripted sound and all that stuff. I would just go online for that. But I'm calling you because I want to talk to somebody. Um, and so for her, she wanted to be a caterer. And I sat down and I said... I said, uh, what's your goal for your catering company? And she said, uh, well, I want to be a world-renowned caterer. I said, what's the two main things people go to caterers for? And they, she was like, well, food, and I don't know what else. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to just tell you, it's service. I've never seen anyone hire a caterer outside of food and service. Like, that's the mm -hmm. only thing that I see people go for. So I said, you're at a job where you can literally practice your service all day. Now, when you go home, you can practice on your on your your food and all this other stuff. But I was like, you're getting free game right now. You're getting a free opportunity to practice your service all day. And you're not losing money. You're not losing business. You're not getting bad referrals on Google. You're not getting bad. Like, you're not getting a one-star bar in Yelp. So why yeah. not take advantage of that? And so then she, it kind of let the light click on for her because she was like, oh, it makes sense. So let me use my job to get what I need from it. But for her, she was like, man, I'm out. I got to go work somewhere else. I'm not fulfilled. I don't, you know, I, I got my, my catering business coming on. So that's the that's the thing that you have to think about. So run to something. It yeah. doesn't matter what job you're in. Run to that. Or like, what am I going to extract from this job for me to take the next step in life? Like, even with me, before I started speaking, I was like, man, I never spoke before. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I was like, no, actually, I have spoke because I've been presenting. I've been training people. I've been doing power sessions with teams. Like I've been speaking my whole life. Yeah. And then it comes full circle. But that's the thing. Figure out what you're running to and stop trying to figure out what you're running from. And that's what a lot of people do is they come into jobs and they just say, well, immediately, this isn't the environment that I want to be in. So I'm out. Like take the thing from there and you can always move to the next spot. So that's the that's the biggest uh, advice I can give. That's good. That's good. So before we get out of here, uh, real quick, share with our audience what's new for you in 2021. 
and also how they can get in contact with you uh, for assistance or for services and how they can contact you on social media. Yeah. So uh, y'all can get in contact with me on all social media platforms. Uh, I'm on Facebook for the most part. So Corey Sigu on Facebook. Um, I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn and all that stuff, too. Uh, if you send an email to uh, info at Corey uh, if you feel like emailing me there. Um, what's new for me in 2021? Uh, for me, it's just it's just getting to the business. Uh, I think I have enough information right now. I got enough. Like 2020 was building. 2020, I felt like I went internally and fixed some stuff in the mainframe. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Like, it's time to go. So, yeah, uh, I just spoke to the University of Houston for a leadership development thing uh, that nice. they had going on uh, last Friday. So, yeah, man, it's just it's it's getting more gigs, getting out there and really spreading the message because I feel like what I have I, what I have to give and the lives that you can change, like leadership changes lives. Um, and and without it, you know, you can literally lose lives. And I always think about one of the things that drives me is uh, individual I had. He suffered with depression. And, uh, you know, I used to pour into him every day and just be like, look, man, just take it day by day. Put two feet on the ground every single day. Uh, and he told me one day, he said, Corey, I was out the last two days because I, I probably thought I wasn't going to be here. And so he said, I took the knife. I had the knife up to my neck. I was just about to end it, cut my wrist and all that stuff. But he was oh, like, man. I still remember you saying, man, just put two feet on the ground. Like, it's going to be OK if you could just get through this. Uh, mm. You know, you're going to be OK. And so it's like, that's the type of stuff. Like, how many more people out there exist like him that you can yeah. touch? How many leaders can I touch? that can impact people like him because I know I can't reach everybody. But the, the thing is, I know, I know I got a message that can help somebody be able to help them. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. And uh, let them know uh, where they can contact the uh, acting lead. Consulting yeah. Group as so well. you can, uh, you can contact us at info at acting lead, uh, com. Uh, matter of fact, uh, you know, jo join the community, uh, act lead, uh, consultant.com, uh, backslash, uh, or forward slash. I always get them mixed up. Uh, community. <laughs> Uh, so info at act. Uh, so you can you can email us info at act and lead um, dot com or like join the community uh, act and lead on Facebook. Uh, you know, we're giving giving game in there. Uh, but yeah, join the join the community act lead dot com act lead consultant dot com uh, forward slash uh, community. That's what's up. That's what's up. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Shannon Smith. And what I do is I educate and motivate and assist companies and entrepreneurs in reaching their full potential. Uh, maximizing productivity, focusing on improving staff performance, uh, branding, profitability, customer acquisition, tech and market presence, as well as scalability. Um, you can contact me at the underscore CEO underscore within on Instagram, or you can uh, reach out to my company, the CEO within you at www.theceowithinyou.com. And, you know, like I said, if you're trying to start a business as well as if you already have an established company, uh, we did help out nonprofits as well as corporate clients. We get you straight. All right. So, like I said, for season two, want to end each show with a mind shift moment. Uh, just recently we had, you know, we celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So I, I want to end this mind shift moment with one of his quotes. It says, if you can't fly, then, uh, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. One more time from Martin Luther King Jr. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. All righty. That concludes our Mind Shift moment for this week. Uh, you can catch us here next week, same time, 8 o'clock Eastern time, Thursdays at www.facebook.com slash SIWR podcast. I have another guest here. Mr. Jay Allen will be on with me next week. And with that one, we remind you that you were designed not to be good, but you were designed to be great. See you next week. Peace.